Hello and welcome to NDTV 24-7. I'm Rohit Wellington. Let's begin with our top story. India on Wednesday reported the highest number of daily deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. The number of cases in the last 24 hours were 3,48,421. It was a 6% jump compared to the previous day. 4,205 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours. That's the highest daily figure for India so far. Tests in the last 24 hours, 19,83,804 tests were conducted, a jump of over 7%. Vaccinations, however, have declined, dipped by 2.2%. Today's positive, positivity rate stood at 17.56%. And now there's a, a vaccine crisis in the national capital Delhi. There are reportedly no co-vaccine jabs for 18 to 44 age category. Over 125 vaccination centers will remain shut on Thursday. Only 16,900 doses are left for the 18 to 44 age group. 1.58 lakh doses are left for the healthcare workers and those above 45. Now, 12 major opposition parties have written to the Prime Minister demanding that the centre take immediate action as the ferocious second wave of COVID rips through the country. The opposition parties have said procure vaccines centrally from all available sources. They go on to say immediately begin a free universal mass vaccination campaign across the country, invoke compulsory licensing to expand domestic vaccine production, spend budgetary allocation of 35,000 crore rupees for the vaccines, stop central Vista construction, use allocated money for procuring oxygen and vaccines instead, release all money held in the unaccounted private trust fund PM Cares to buy more vaccines, oxygen and medical equipment, and give all jobless at least 6,000 rupees per month and that there should be free distribution of food grain to the needy. Now, 10 more bodies have been recovered from uh, a river, which is a tributary of the river Ganga, this time in the supernet, which was thrown at the UP-Bihar border. Now, Bihar government has urged the centre to hold an inquiry to find out who is throwing dead bodies into the river Ganga. In the meantime, Patna High Court has also stepped in and asked for a report by Thursday. Manish Kumar with this ground report from Baksar. After this super net was thrown by Baksar District Administration at Karamansa River, a tributary of the Ganges on Bihar UP border, 10 more bodies were recovered today. With this, the total bodies fished out from this river has crossed 80 as at least 71 decomposed bodies were retrieved on Tuesday. Eyewitnesses claim bodies were being thrown at the behest of local police post on the UP side. Meanwhile, the Baksar District Administration today heaved a sigh of relief when at this Mahadev Ghat, not a single body was found floating today. Going on an offensive, Bihar Water Resources Minister Sanjay Jha urged center for a probe. Jha, in a series of tweets to Union Minister for Jal Shakti, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, said that this is an insult to the river Ganges. With Patna High Court now taking note of these floating dead bodies, it seems that at last there will be some dignity in death to all those who are succumbing to COVID. With Manish Kumar, Usama Shab for NDTV. Now, Uttar Pradesh has reported over 20,000 daily COVID cases for the last week and 250 plus deaths each day. And these are just the official figures. Across the state, there is a worry over the spread of the pandemic to the state's vast rural areas where a lot of COVID deaths may be going unreported. The state government says that it has launched a massive tracking and testing drive across rural UP. But can the rural surge in India's most populous state be contained? Fewer chaotic scenes at the main COVID crematorium in Lucknow. A month ago, these disquieting scenes of endless funeral fires were filmed at the same location. Ironically, the UP government was reporting lesser COVID deaths in Lucknow at the time, despite evidence from crematoriums suggesting massive underreporting. On Tuesday, Lucknow reported 1,154 fresh COVID cases and 23 deaths. 
241 people have died in Lucknow from COVID in the past week. A month ago, on April 14, UP's capital reported 5,433 fresh COVID cases, but just 14 official COVID deaths. Lucknow has seen over 2,000 COVID deaths since the beginning of the pandemic, the highest for one location in UP. While no official count of Lucknow's cremations, COVID or otherwise for the last few days was available, but quieter crematoriums certainly do indicate that the data being given out by the UP government now is a little more in sync with ground realities. But are more deaths now happening in UP's sprawling rural areas? And are these deaths being underreported? At Khera, a village in West UP's Meerut district that reported 1,368 fresh COVID cases on Tuesday, the highest in UP, locals claim at least 30 people have died from COVID-related symptoms in the last 10 days. On Tuesday, this UP government team was in Khera to carry out gold standard RT-PCR and antigen tests as part of the UP government's drive to track and treat COVID in rural areas. Ten days ago, a relative of this Khera resident, Praveen Som, saw her oxygen levels dip to 60 after days of persistent fever, despite a negative RT-PCR test report. Despite a scramble for a hospital bed, she could not be saved. In Sardhana, a small town in Meerut, government officials claim they have tracked over 58,000 people for COVID screening and identified 1,036 people with symptoms in the last few days. But at the government-run hospital in this town, there are barely any treatment facilities for COVID patients. जितनी भी डेथ हो रही है उसमें कोविड 90 परसेंट केसेस नहीं हैं। एक नया टर्म निकल के आया है हैप्पी हाइपोक्सिया। मरीज बिल्कुल ठीक होता है, उसको कोई किसी तरह का सिम्टम नहीं होता, खासकर जवानों में। उनका एकदम से ऑक्सीजन लेवल डाउन होता है, पहले 85, जब तक हॉस्पिटल लेके जाते हैं 60 the Uttar Pradesh government says it is tracking the spread of COVID in rural areas in a big manner. But are these efforts enough? With Ravi Shukla in Meerut, this is Alok Pandey, NDTV. Now in villages in Haryana, COVID is spreading fast and with testing not as widespread as it should be, locals say that many are dying of fever. Where testing is possible, COVID is seen to be the cause behind the deaths. But with so many people dying before they can be tested, the worry is that these deaths are not being recorded in official figures. Saurabh Shukla with this report from Titoli village in Rohtak. Dharmendra's two brothers died within a week. Both were in their 30s. They had similar symptoms, fever to begin with and then difficulty in breathing. By the time they could get a place in a hospital and oxygen, it was too late. सरकार कह रही है कि इनको प्राइवेट को मत दो, हॉस्पिटल वालों को दो, और हमारे पाबंदी लगा दी। वे लास्ट में बहुत दिक्कत होगी और एडमिट करवाए तो इतने में चेस्ट चारों तरफ से घेर लिया था बीमारी ने और चार पांच दिन के बाद हमारे दोनों भाइयों की डेथ हो गई थी। टाइम पे एडमिट होते तो बच जाते थे। In Rohtak's Titoli village, mourning and lamentation. In the past 10 days, there have been 18 deaths here due to COVID. But the village Sarpan says the figures could be higher. 40 people died in the past fortnight due to fever. Most of them did not get tested for COVID. The Haryana government is worried about the rampant spread of COVID in rural areas. Special teams have now been formed. Covid-19 
दाखिल कराएंगे In Rajasthan too of the total number of covid cases 41% are from rural areas in an unusual case in seekers khirwa village 20 people died between the middle of april and the first week of may none of these have been confirmed as covid deaths har tarah se door to door survey karwaya jo ki hum baaki jagah bhi karwa rahe hain lekin ab wahan pe humne vishesh dhyan deke karwaya hai aur sath hi sath humne ज्यादा से जितने भी पेशेंट्स इसमें ऐसे पाए गए हैं जो कि उसके संक्रमित व्यक्ति के संपर्क में हैं या फिर जिनको किसी प्रकार के लक्षण हैं उनको दवाइयों की किट उपलब्ध कराई है घर पर ही ये काम पूरे जिले में किया जा रहा है लेकिन कुछ पंचायतें जहां पे ज्यादा केसेस अचानक से आ गए थे उनमें हमने विशेष ध्यान दे बहुत बड़े स्तर पर करवाया है The administration did over 150 RT-PCR tests in the village. Though only six people were found positive, the village has been declared a no mobility zone. With Saurabh Shukla in Rohtak, Harsha Kumari Singh, NDTV. Meanwhile, Goa is also staring at a crisis with high positivity rate, with 26 patients uh, dying at a Goa hospital. The Goa bench of the Bombay High Court pulled up the hospital authorities. A crisis in the making an overcrowded hospital in Goa where patients are lying on the floor because there aren't enough beds and a positivity rate that touched 50% just a couple of days ago meaning every other person that is tested in Goa is covid positive After Goa's health minister Vishwajit Rane announced that as many as 26 patients died in Goa Medical College in the early hours of Tuesday because of a lack of oxygen the Goa bench of Bombay High Court on Wednesday pulled up the dean of the hospital saying enough is enough sometimes the authorities say there is enough oxygen but there are logistical constraints sometimes they say there is not enough oxygen available for additional cylinders goa chief minister pramod savant wearing a ppe suit visited the hospital to take stock where he spoke with doctors healthcare staff and even interacted with patients admitted that there are difficulties but there is no shortage of oxygen जितने कोविड वार्ड है वहाँ जाके मैंने डॉक्टर से बात की नर्सिस से बात की वहाँ के हाउसकीपिंग से बात की पेशेंट से बात की वहाँ के डिफिकल्टीज हैं वहाँ पे सिलेंडर पहुँचने के लिए थोड़े बहुत देर होती है डेट इज देर बट हमारे पास सिलेंडर अवेलेबल है ऑक्सीजन अवेलेबल है गोवा द स्टेट विद पॉपुलेशन ऑफ मेयरली टू मिलियन हैज अ पॉजिटिविटी रेट ऑफ फोर्टी वन परसेंट दिस आफ्टर रिकॉर्डिंग अ मैसिव फिफ्टी वन परसेंट जस्ट लास्ट वीक द नंबर गिविंग अ सॉरी पिक्चर एज ऑफ द ट्वेल्थ ऑफ मे The state recorded a little over 2,865 cases from a testing sample of 6,920. The deaths recorded were 70, a little lower from the 75 recorded on the 11th of May. The recovery rate is 72 percent. The infectivity rate is coming down. It was around uh, almost uh, touched 51 percent at a time. Uh, and last uh, two three days from 41 percent, then it has come to 35 percent yesterday. After much criticism a delayed response from the government Goa is under 15 days of curfew with this the administration is hoping that the situation will improve in the coming days with Anil Patil in Goa and Purva Chitnis Anasya Mathur for NDTV Now covid cases in Karnataka and Bengaluru have been coming down over the last few days but still remain very high with Karnataka the worst hit state and Bengaluru the city with the most number of active cases Karnataka is trying some new approaches to ease the trauma of patients looking for hospital beds. Maya Sharma reports. Getting a hospital bed for COVID treatment has often been a nightmare for patients and their families in Bengaluru, the city with the most number of active cases in the country. Now the city authorities are trying new approaches, starting with triage centers. in each of the sprawling city's 28 assembly constituencies patients can just head there no need to go through the helpline or wait for an ambulance doctors there will decide whether they need home care should go to a covid care center or should be hospitalized who require hospitalization or triage and sent to the hospitals who require admissions in this in this direction we are trying to streamline so that the demand and supply is address very effectively there will be there should be zero problem it is only 28 places 28 locations have been given in this any of this location anybody can go from anywhere and get triage oxygen has been a struggle 
even for those admitted to hospital, with many city hospitals having run short of supply. Another new approach is the use of oxybuses, which will be able to provide oxygen to eight patients at a time outside a triage center or hospital. And in association with Ola and NGOs, the state has also seen the launch of a free service of home delivery of oxygen concentrators. Vaccine supply remains a huge challenge, and the state has put out a global tender for two crore vaccines, in addition to three crore doses already ordered from Indian manufacturers. See, already we have placed order for three crore vaccine with Serum Institute as well as Covaxin. So they are going to supply the vaccine along with that. Additionally, we are trying to pro procure from various sources. Whoever can cater our requirement immediately, we are looking to them. So that there is a lot of demand. There is there's a lot of demand for the vaccine. People want to get vaccinated as early as possible. This is one of the hospitals that will be used as a triage center in Bengaluru. Patients should not be denied access to such centers. The hope is that new initiatives like this and an enhanced supply of oxygen and vaccine will help Karnataka and Bengaluru turn the corner. With DM Kumar, Maya Sharma in Bengaluru for NDTV.